Yes, good evening. The closure of Thorsby brings to an end almost a century of coal mining in Nottinghamshire and across the wider East Midlands. Now, coal is still being, still being brought to the surface here. That's because it's been bought and paid for. But the last coal was cut late this morning and the winding gear has stopped and it won't start again. And that's because the government has decided that the hundreds of millions of pounds being spent supporting this pit and another in North Yorkshire didn't represent value for money. 400 people have lost their jobs on a day of huge symbolism. Mike O'Sullivan reports. Yeah, it's, been, it's been great. Yeah, it's been nice knowing you, mate, yeah. after all these years. The final goodbyes to valued workmates at Thorsby Pit in Nottinghamshire. Dale and Steve have both been in the mining industry for decades. The colliery, the last remaining in the East Midlands, ceased production today. In total, 600 jobs have gone. Terrible. It's unreal. It's a surreal day. Everyone's sad. Everyone's saying goodbye to people who've worked with for, for years. It's, it's horrible. There's handshakes all over him. It was, uh, it was quite sad. Tears? Yeah, near, nearly. I, I told him back, yeah. In its heyday, Thorsby was a record breaker. The nationalised pits competing with each other to produce the most coal. Most former miners will tell you that what they missed most about the job is the camaraderie. Below ground, they're a sort of band of brothers. And that spirit spilled out into the communities too. And most ex-miners will tell you that, like the pits, that's disappearing as well. There's no room for sentiment when you look at the business case according to UK Coal. The price of coal has plummeted and a request for £330 million of investment from the government turned down. The market in, the, in, in, in 2013, we were receiving around £70 a tonne for our product. Uh, coal prices at the moment are £42 a tonne or there, thereabout. So we have been viable recently only because we stopped investing, hence the closure of the colliery. Whatever way you look at it, it's going to cost money to keep the lights on in this country. And do we really want to be held ransom to the Russian coal, which is what the majority of the coal that comes from abroad? Colombian coal, what they, they, their record's terrible on human rights. It's just plays, it even comes from Australia. I'm absolutely devastated. I really, really hoped it wouldn't come to this. I hope we'll be able to stop the closure of Thors with the last pit in Nottinghamshire and just the end of this industry as a whole. The mine workers still don't know the full terms of their redundancy packages. UK government aid has yet to be approved by the EU. Michael Sullivan, BBC East Midlands Today, Thorsby. Well, the first shafts were sunk here back in 1925. One of dozens of mines established in the coal fields of the East Midlands. Michael Sullivan now looks back at their long, proud and sometimes tumultuous history. They're the tallest headstocks in Europe. Clipston Pit closed in 2003 and the headstocks remain as a relic to a once mighty industry and the communities that surrounded it. A few miles away at Ollerton, another reminder of an era that's now passed. Eight pits around here closed in the five years from 1989. There's no future around here for nobody, to be honest with you. So we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, I'm retirement age now, so but I feel sorry for all the young ones now. There's no industries around here. Coal was an industry that employed tens of thousands in our region. Dirty and dangerous work. This is Bestwood Pit in the 1930s. Princess Margaret dons white overalls when she visits Calverton Colliery in Nottinghamshire. It's so important that the royal family wanted to be seen at the coal face. Princess Margaret visiting Calverton in 1954. The Duke of Edinburgh in the late 1960s at Bevercoats. This map shows just how many pits were around in the East Midlands from the post-war period. Many closed down in the late 1950s and early 60s, but even into the 80s, it was a thriving industry. And I'll tell you how, we could already have won this strike. The miners' strike of 1984-85 called by the NUM to stop pit closures. But without a ballot, most Nottinghamshire miners and others worked on, splitting communities and families. Later, the Knotts miners formed their own union, the UDM. But in the early 90s, the shock of a huge pit closure plan. The UDM president, Roy Link, protested for a week underground. Privatisation came in 1994, but still the pits were closed. By the end of the 1990s, many headstocks were being demolished, including Billsthorpe, the Asfordby super pit in Leicestershire. These days, the old UDM headquarters in Mansfield have gone too, sold off for housing. In the new, smaller office, 
The president told me coal should still be mined. The unions were obviously wanting the government to put money in, into uh, clean coal technology. And I think had it been done and the amount of money put in at a far earlier stage, then we would have had new coal fire stations with carbon capture and storage fitted. And I believe that would have took us well into the future. And across town at the NUM offices, the retired branch meets up. Hard to believe the whole industry is gone in this region. If you'd have said to me about 30, in 30 years' time, and this is the time of the strike, that that's it, that'd be the last pit closing, I'd have, I'd have just laughed at you. It's absolutely disgusting. It, it really is. I mean, when you think this country is built on coal. And a way of life has disappeared. Paul Fillingham is a digital artist. He grew up the son of a miner in Blidworth. They were in a very dangerous environment together. So you had buddies, you know, that were really, really, you know, like brothers, if you like. And, it, and, and the whole village felt like that. At Clipston, an attempt's being made to turn the headstocks into a tourist attraction, including a zip wire. Our project focuses very much on regeneration and creating opportunities for local people and young people to start up new businesses and encourage innovation, really. Ollerton's old pit is now a park and office complex, employing hundreds, but there's no single industry big enough to take the place of King Coal. So, uh, as we've heard, back in the heyday of mining in the East Midlands, few would have imagined this day, the day when there isn't a single working pit in our region. Well, I met up with a group of uh, ex-miners at a heritage museum in Billsthorpe, not far from here. Now, that's a former pit village where you may remember three men died in an underground accident back in 1993. Now, for decades, these men had held a variety of jobs, both above and below ground. Most had mining in their blood, working in so-called family pits. One, as you'll hear, is also a poet. They'd spent decades in collieries across Nottinghamshire, including Bill Thorpe, Annesley and Thorsby. It's fair to say they don't miss the job itself, but they told me they do miss the time when mining was at the very heart of their communities. And each mine had its own welfare and so forth. And people collected around those areas mm. for like whatever it may be, talking about football, watching football, playing football, cricket and so forth. And it was all it's a life gone. My dad and all his family on the dad's side of the family all worked in mining. And I've done a bit of a family tree actually, a very yeah. basic one, and it goes back seven generations. This is my dad's lamp, yeah. This is, this, this is a thing that you pass on through, uh, through family, so my daughter will get this. That's my dad's check number 593. So he all said that when they're alive, he said, that you can have my lamp, you know. And so that'll, that'll actually pass as a family heirloom through through the, through the family. You could work with people and down the mine, you, you perhaps not even like one another, but that didn't show. It, they looked after you, you looked after them, and it was, uh, it was like being in the forces, if you will. It's the end of an era. Probably. Of course it is, yes, yeah. Which is a shame because it's not done through lack of reserves. You see, I mean, we've got four foot seams, you can say from here, more or less to Skegness. So it's just lack of um, support, government money. Personally, I think we're making a big mistake shutting them all, but because uh, we've got no to rely on. If they want to the talk the ass off, we've had it, haven't we? You know, people who didn't work in mining might say, well, it was a dangerous, dirty job. You know, good riddance, effectively. What's your view? True. But you miss all the... When you finish, you miss all the time friends and all sorts. I mean, I finished up going coach driving. So really, a little fame, you don't get as many friends. You all looked out for each other. It was the only way you were one big team. Everybody worked together. You might fall out outside the colliery, but when you worked together, you were a team. I remember reporting on, on the fatal accident here. Oh, at Billstorp on August 93. Yeah. Yes, I was on that morning a hot August morning. Mm. I must say it's one of the worst times of my life. The earth is in charge. You do everything you can to help yourself, to keep things safe, but there's always something going to catch you up now and again. Now as I look into the sky, mine eyes are filled with pride. 
as I drink a toast and recall that we never took for granted. Good times were all we wanted. So here's to my mates. God bless all. A sad day for many. And as one of the men said there, are we making a mistake closing down all the coal mines? What of the future? What if they do turn off the gas supply? Well, one of the big challenges of our age is about generating power while still tackling climate change. Peter Saul looks now at our changing energy landscape. Just down the road from Thorsby, and they used to mine coal here at Billsthorpe too. The pits long gone, replaced with wind turbines, a solar farm and a gas extraction facility. This site takes methane from the old mine works and converts it into electricity, extending the colliery's life. The mixture of technologies here powers thousands of homes. As we become less and less reliant on coal, renewables are increasingly important. These sources of energy provided about a fifth of our electricity needs last year, a record high. But the general consensus is that for now at least, they can only be part of the solution. I think you've definitely got to look at everything there is. Uh, and most of it, to get it better, it means you've got to pour some money into the research. Carry out research and you can solve a lot of the problems, but it won't be done overnight. You've got to be patient, work at it, and we can get there. Of course, energy-related developments are often controversial. The government is now giving communities the power to stop wind turbines being built. A few miles away though, and some locals have literally bought into wind energy. We have uh, a group of 78 people that actually own, own the turbine. Ideally, I think everybody will produce their own energy. You'll have your own photovoltaic panel on, the, on your roof, or you might have a group of people that own a wind turbine. And in that way, pulling the production process closer to where you live gives you more sense of ownership and it puts more benefits into the community. The changing landscape reflects the need to tackle climate change and keep the lights on. Coal may be declining, but the region will still generate power. Peter Saul, BBC East Midlands Today, Nottingham. Well, here's how much things have really changed. That mining museum that I mentioned, they show parties of school children around and they show them a lump of coal and without exception, not one child has seen that before. Well, I'll be back later, but for now, back to the studio.